Um, so do you remember when I was telling you that the best way to create an app today is actually with a game engine? I'm not like super hardcore about my stance or anything, but I just wanted to share my thoughts on why I decided to use a game engine for my next app. And you know, you can totally drop your points too, like why you think I shouldn't. Sound good? Alright, before we dive into all this, there are two things you should know about this project. First, I don't care about any system integration, like, at all. And second, this app is purely for personal use. I don't plan to share it or anything, which means I have all the flexibility to tailor it exactly to my needs. Oh, and one more thing, I haven't even started coding it yet. But it's been something I wanted to do for some time now, and today I finally whipped up a design prototype to kick things off. It's actually pretty simple. I'm totally confident I'll have the basics up and running by next week. No sweat. Anyway, let me show you what this whole thing is about. It's a text-to-speech app. Well, okay. Okay, it's way more than that, but I'll explain everything in just a moment. No need to pause the video, fam. I've got you covered. By the way, I made the mock-up on Inkscape and... Okay, this is kind of random, but this is Inkscape 1.5. Yep, true story. It kind of works. I'm just waiting for a really nice merge request, and then I'm gonna upload a video on that too. If I get the time, to be honest. Anyway, back to the app stuff. Let's keep going. So this might be a quick and 30 blueprint, but it's already structured with Godot and scene composition in mind. We've got the sidebar scene, the editor scene, the playback scene, and like a bunch more. It's all coming together piece by piece. If you don't know how scene composition works in Godot, and don't worry, it's totally normal if you don't, let me show you how it works, maybe? We're gonna start by creating a new scene. Let's call it main scene. Oh, and by the way, Everything in Godot is basically a node that contains another node, which contains another node, and so on. It's like building blocks, creating a hierarchical structure for your games, or for your apps in this case. So now we created another node, a text box, which is a child of the main scene node. And, hmm, maybe we should also add a button or something to see how states works in Godot. Let's make that a bit bigger. Mm, wait, something's wrong here. I can smell it! <laughs> Found it! Turns out I made that button a child of the text edit instead of the scene node. Oops. Fixed it now. Crisis averted. Add a hello goto button label. And let's run our scene. But we need to save it first. Just main underscore scene inside the root folder. So we've got an input field and a button, but right now, nothing happens when we tap it. How about we add some text to the input when the button is pressed? By the way, we could use containers and lay out our controls properly, but honestly, that's a waste of time right now. Let's do something more useful, like diving into scene composition. So I'm going to delete this, create a new scene with a button, and then import that scene in our main scene, alright? Name this, like button scene. And again, I'll add a text button exactly like before. Um, hello, Godo. Okay. And save the scene. Button. Underscore scene. Again, in root. Now we'll head back to the main scene and drag and drop the button scene from our Assets Manager. Right here, anywhere you like. Okay, so now a bunch of things are happening. First off, the button scene is now a child node of the main scene. Progress. Basically, the button scene is now an instance of the main scene. And here's the cool part. We can actually have multiple copies of the same scene, each maintaining a different state. But, uh, I guess that's a bit out of scope for this video to explain in detail, right? Let's keep rolling. Now, here's the thing. We want to add text to the input when the button is pressed. But here's the catch. While the main scene keeps a reference to the button scene, so the parent can access the child's nodes, the child shouldn't directly reference the parent. Why? Because that would break encapsulation. So, what's the solution? Signals. <laughs> That's the way to go. So for the button scene, here's the plan. We need a signal that, on button press, will take the text we want to print as a parameter. 
Then, in the onReady function, we'll connect the button to that signal. And finally, on button press, we'll emit the signal. Easy, right? Now for the main scene. One thing is that in our script, we can actually directly reference the button scene, just like that. On ready, we connect the button press signal from the button scene node to the button press event, and finally we set the string parameter as the text of the text input node. Boom! Everything's connected and ready to roll. One last step, we need to attach the scripts to the nodes. Now, we could attach them directly to the actual controls, but instead we're going to attach them to each scene's top-level node, alright? So, on the main scene node, let's do a quick load and attach the main scene GD script. Same thing for the button scene. Quick load and attach the button scene GD script. And just like that, we're all set. So if we run it again, and press the button, we get the text in the input. Boom! Basically, we've succeeded at two things at once. First, we made a scene composition, and second, we change the state of a node using a signal from another node. Double win! Mmm, originally I had some more context here, but I think I've dragged it out long enough already. Anywho, I just wanted to give you a basic idea of how application development works with game engines. And if you're wondering about the capabilities of the toolkit, oh well, the Godot editor itself is written with the Godot engine. I rest my case! Okay squad, let's go back to the mock-up to show you exactly what we want to build, and why I picked Godot for it. I think I'll start with the app options first. Let's break it down step by step. So, on the voice page, we can add our available voices, but here's the important part. The app is using the 11 Labs API for this. 11 Labs provides both text-to-speech and speech-to-speech, -speech, along with a few extra features like dubbing. But in any case, it's 11 Labs only. I'm not interested in supporting more voice services and making this harder to maintain. Keep it simple, right? The second API it uses is a language model. I think I'll start with Anthropic, but I'm not entirely sure I'm going to keep this. I might use multiple models, or maybe even local models. Unlike with voice models, language models is really simple to support multiples. But honestly, I don't know yet. For now, I'll just start with Anthropic and see where it takes me. Of course, the models will be fine-tuned to Mii's character, because she's one of a kind, right? And here's the cool part. With every new scene, she'll be self-training. That means at some point she'll be able to run entirely on her own free will, creating her own videos without any human interaction. But don't worry, she'll always stay true to the origins of the original character. That's non-negotiable. Um, but how can me create her own videos? It's actually pretty simple. You can set the language model along with the actual text to also add character emotions to each sentence, like wave hand with angry look or smile brightly. Then, you can match these emotions to an animation dictionary in the game engine, and boom, done. Just like that, Mii can bring her own scenes to life with emotions and movements. So, the third and final thing this app should do is export a scene made here into a scene for rendering in a game engine. Actually, I've already written this part of the code for another project, so it only needs slight modifications. But right now, I'm using Unity, and at some point I want to switch this to Godot, so, um, I guess needs more work than slight modifications eventually. Why Godot, you may ask? First, because it's way more productive to work with a single game engine than two, and second, because open source is a huge bonus when you need a lot of customization. Plus, the Godot community is just really nice. Alright, alright, let me give you a quick overview of the app. Now, I know lots of things are missing from the UI, like the dialogues or various pop-ups with extra context. Also, the overall design isn't particular smart, but here's the thing, the UI is made to be easy to build with Godot. Besides, we can always improve things later, right? Especially when working with game engines. They're so flexible. Anyway, on the left we have our scene selection. Most of the time we'll only need one scene, but there's an option to add more. It works like tabs, really, because in the future, I want to add stuff like scene cloning, dumping, and exporting with different options, or voices. So, I thought, why not add this from the start? Better to plan ahead and be ready for future upgrades. On the right is our control panel. This is where all the voice and model options should be, and they'll affect the next regeneration. Think of it as the command center for tweaking Mii's performance, whether it's her voice, emotions, or even the language model she's using. Everything you need to fine-tune her is right here, ready to go. Last but not least, we have the editor, and these are our controls. Play obviously generates and plays the audio, and on the bottom, we have the actual playback component. Voice regeneration, text generation with the language model. 
voice to voice, because there are things that you still need to do with your mouth. Export audio and open the text to an external code editor. For example, if we want to edit the SSML. Oh, and one more thing, the app should cache password generation so we can pick the one we like the most. And so guys, that was the app. And as you can see, most of it deals with web services, while the UI is pretty basic, which means it gives me a massive pool of languages and toolkits to pick from. So next, I'll share my brainstorming and tell you why I ended up with Godot for doing this. One quick thought was to use Flutter, but it got dropped immediately. First, because I don't need the adaptability, and second, I just don't like Dart. Dart and Java are the only languages I literally hate. Sorry, not sorry. Second on the list? Guess what? But even if I could somehow forget the fact that QDET is my eternal enemy, if I was going to use C++ and QML, I'd rather use C++ and Blueprint in Unreal. At least I'd be learning something useful along the way. Um, I've always wanted to take a look at that engine anyway. But, anywho, Unreal got dropped because it's totally overkill for this type of development, and the license doesn't help much either. So, moving on. ISRS could have been a choice, but it also got dropped pretty quickly. First, there's no way to quickly prototype. Second, there's not much community support, and Cosmic is like, what, four or five people? But most importantly, if I were going to choose the hard way, I would have gone with Bevy. Oh man, if you see their ECS system, you'll fall in love with this project. Unfortunately, they haven't started working on a UI yet, or more accurately, the Bevy UI is currently super low level. But you know what, squad? One day, and I'll come back for Bevy, and it'll come back strong. Sticking to the Rust ecosystem, one actually great choice, and maybe the best one so far, even if I didn't pick it, was the Tori toolkit. Tori basically mixes web technologies for the user interface with Rust for the backend logic, and it's backed by a super active community. But, you know why I didn't pick it? Just doesn't click with me. Yep, that's the truth. It seems perfect on paper, but it just doesn't click. I'm sorry, Tori. It's not you, it's me. <laughs> and so, here we go. Now comes the question you've probably been wondering since the very start of this video. You've seen the app design, you know the services I'm using, and you know I'm unknown. So I bet right now, you're like, why the hell don't you just use GTK with Python? What the hell is so wrong with your brain, me? Well, for starters, lots of things are wrong with my brain. No surprises there. But I want you to know that I didn't make this decision lightly. Actually, I'm fully committed to doing this right. I'm going to spend the time, and I'm going to get really upset if I fail it. So, trust me, this was a tough decision. It wasn't easy. Not easy at all. Look, basically, there isn't some specific reason why someone shouldn't use PyGTK for a project like this. I don't know any. But I can tell you why I personally preferred Godot over GTK for it. First, the scene editor in Godot is really useful. And I know GTK has Campbellache, but it's not the same... You can't design a full application with it. You know what? I wish Christian was working on a scene editor for GTK instead of Builder. I mean, there are tons of code editors out there. Way better than Builder, honestly, even for writing GTK apps. But there's no scene graph editor for GTK. It's such a bummer! Obviously, the biggest advantage of PyGTK over Godot is that every AI API is basically written in Python. But here's where the GDScript magic happens. You can just ask your code editor AI to write you a call to 11 labs in GDScript. And boom! Done! It's insane how good GDScript works with AI. Actually, your 80% of game logic will be AI generated without even need to review the code. Oh, and yesterday was the release of Claude 3.7 Sonnet, making the experience even smoother. If you didn't know, when you download Godot, it comes in two variants. One is the default engine with GDScript, and the other is the .NET engine with C-Sharp. So, people in forums are often like, Hey guys, I'm new to game development, what should I use? And honestly, it's such a relatable question. Everyone's got their own preferences. But to give you my input, even though I have a strong background in C-sharp with Unity, I still picked GDScript. Why? Well, C-sharp might scale better for really big projects, but for most smaller games, like this app, GDScript is totally the way to go. First, because you don't need to wait for annoying compiles with every little change you make. But most importantly, you can still use faster, system-level languages with GD extensions when you need that extra power. Best of both worlds, squad. We even have Rust bindings. And as you can see, they're quite active. Remember earlier when I told you I already have the code that can import voice and animations directly into Unity's timeline to create cinematics? Well, 
that's made in Rust, and I plan to use it with the Rust GD extension. I could totally show you how to do that, but honestly, no need. You can just ask your AI. Oh man, development is so fucking nice these days. And guys, do you even realize this? You can have the UI logic in GDScript in a fucking game engine, and handle the backend logic and intensive operations in Rust. How fucking awesome is that, huh? I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, but above everything else, what actually made me choose Godot over GTK was the technical capabilities of the framework. Godot gives you the flexibility, power, and creativity to bring your ideas to life in ways GTK just can't match, in ways that GTK can't even imagine. For example, what if, in this app, we could have the actual 3D character in the background so we could quickly preview or change animations before export it and rendering it in the game engine? That's not just some gimmick. It's super useful. Mmm, now that I'm rethinking it, this whole app could actually be a Godot add-on. Wouldn't that be something? And, 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 all of this is possible thanks to yet another amazing game developers community. And I'm not just trying to be nice here. The Godot community is really amazing. Don't believe me? Okay, check this out then. You'll see what I mean. Okay, so the current stable Godot release is 4.3, and the next one, 4.4, is most probably coming out next week. And almost every week tops two, there's a new Godot development release. And these aren't just small bug fixes either. They actually pack massive new features and updates. I'm telling you, squad, for Godot users, every week is like Christmas. Um, uh, I mean 140 different contributors in almost a single week? GTK can't reach such numbers, even in two years or any other community-driven toolkit, really. And exactly because the development is too fast to follow, Godot posts extremely well-written blogs with all the changes for every release. So pretty much, they post every week. Sick. I want to see how often GTK community posts about their work. You know, just for comparison reasons. Nothing bad meant. <laughs> Alright, so GTK, like three, four weeks ago, added Android backend support. They even had two releases since then, and these guys didn't even care to mention it on the official GTK blog? The fuck? <laughs> I'm sorry, but is this really happening? My point is, you can clearly see it now. From NVIDIA and Facebook to open communities, there's a huge trend towards game engines, 3D, and user interaction in a 3D space. In fact, 2D toolkits like Lib Adweta and Lib Cosmic are already considered legacy, old school Star Trek 1966, the original series. Developers just don't care much about them anymore. That's the cruel reality. I'm not even sure what System76 was thinking starting such a project so late. It's like showing up to a party after everyone's already left. And so, in my turn, I'm just going with the flow, because I strongly believe that game development is going to grow more than almost anything else in the next five years. Maybe behind robotics software. But even that includes game development. I promise you, I know what I'm talking about. I worked at Geely for two years on car simulations, and you wouldn't believe what Unreal Engine is used for. Okay, so what's the catch? Um, there isn't really a catch. Sure, you're bringing a whole game engine just to run a couple of web services, but with modern GPUs, that's not really an issue. It's like having a sports car to drive to the grocery store. Overkill? Maybe. Awesome? Absolutely. Perhaps the most worrying part is keeping up with game engine updates, because I bet they won't be as smooth as updating your toolkit version. Except, of course, if you're porting from GTK3 to GTK4. <laughs> no idea why I keep bitching at GNOME. Did my model get bugged or something? Mm, right now, you'll mostly see Godot used in large graphics applications. But, I think it's time to change all that. What do you say, me? Rules eyes dramatically. First off, it's go dot, not go to. Get it right or I'll hunt you down and skin you alive. And yes, obviously, everything should be made in Godot. Even your stupid text editor should be a game. The universe itself is just some higher being's game anyway. But clearly you're too much of a noob to understand the power of game engines. Have you even compiled Godot from source? Bet you're running some bloated Ubuntu's- <laughs>